Check, check, check. Can I have your attention, please? Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. Council members, please take your seats. Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. Shh. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the charter meeting of January 8th, 2020. Welcome back. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Morelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Gibson. Jonai. Gradenchik. Yes. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Moya. Perkins. Powers. Diaz. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Lanceman. Here. Did you say Rose? Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Ulrich. Fallone. Here. Van Bramer. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum and we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the Reverend M. Zidi Hamathiite, spiritual leader of Wayside Baptist Church, located at 1740 Broadway in Brooklyn. Let us bow our heads, or however we do to talk to God. Good morning, God. We thank you for this opportunity for giving us breath in our bodies. You allowed us to see this day. You brought us into a day we've never seen and we'll never see again. And God, in this special occasion, in this privilege to be able to pray for our city council, 
in the times of trouble, trials, and turmoil that's faced and plagued our country, our nation, and our city. Through it all, I pray that you give strength, clarity of mind, clarity of sight, for we are in year 2020, that we be able to see clearer, hear clearer, think clearer, understand better, that through prejudice and hatred and bigotry and strange cares and non-caring issues in our society, that this council will be balanced to understand that they are signed, they are called, they are voted in to keep the city in a balanced situation. God, we pray that you have your way in their lives. Give them peace, serenity, and power in times like these. In the name I know, Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Hamathiite. I'd now like to ask Councilmember Espinal to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to note that the Reverend is actually one of God's chosen people as he was born in Brooklyn, New York, where he's been all his life. Uh, he studied at Long Island University and received his master's degree from Fordham University in 2017 as an advocate for change and awareness Reverend Hamathiite concern for the community is evident, especially in his work with the youth in Brooklyn. After working in the Department of Education for several years and seeing the need of young people, Reverend developed a program entitled MOVE, M-O-V-E, Men of Valor Empowered, to teach and mentor young men in the community. Since arriving at Wayside Baptist Church in 2010, the pastor established the Wayside Baptist Church Bible Institute and is honored to sit on the Leadership Council for Habitats for Humanity, as well as a board member for the Conference of National Black Churches. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I would like to thank the pastor for being here today and for all the work you do for your congregants and our community in District 37. And I make a motion that this invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Councilmember Espinal and Councilmember Alika Ampre Samuel would also like to join in with you in spreading the invocation. Of course, I have to say a little something <laughs> about my pastor, Pastor Hamathiite, who has been a spiritual leader and um, an advisor in everything else in my life for many years. And although Wayside Baptist Church is just across the street from my district um, on Rockaway Avenue, um, it is my home and the home of my family. And so I just want to thank you for everything you've done for me and the community and the city at large. And so I just wanted to lend my voice and emotion today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Alika Ambry Samuel, and we thank Reverend Hamathiite today for your leadership and your New Year's Eve prayer. And we will now call on Councilmember Adrian Adams for the adoption of the minutes. Madam Majority Leader, I move to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Message and papers from the mayor. None. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got ahead of myself. Madam Majority Leader, I move that the minutes of the stated meeting of November 26, 2019 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much, Councilmember Adams. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Happy New Year uh, to everyone for this charter meeting of the City Council, our first stated meeting of the year. Uh, last week marked the beginning of my third year as Speaker of the City Council, and I am proud of what we have accomplished together and what we have done to make the lives of every New Yorker better. We still have a tremendous amount of a work ahead of us, but together we'll keep fighting to make sure that our city works for everyone. Sadly, we started off this year, our city started off this year, our state started off this year by facing a rash of anti-Semitic attacks across this city and state. These intolerable acts are an attack against our values and everything we hold dear. 
This past Sunday, I joined many of you and many other leaders and tens of thousands of New Yorkers in a march of solidarity with the Jewish community and Jewish New Yorkers, and we marched across the Brooklyn Bridge. We must never be silent when it comes to anti-Semitic attacks or behavior. And I, as well as members of this body, remain united with our Jewish sisters and brothers and condemn these unacceptable acts of hate. We will not and cannot continue to let them happen. I also want to take a few moments to acknowledge a few losses that our city has faced recently. The FDNY is mourning a great loss. Their chief historian, Jonathan Jack Lurch, recently passed away at 88 years old on December 17th. He was the department historian for more than 50 years and knew more about the history of New York's bravest than almost anyone. My prayers are with the family of Jack and the women and men of the fire department. During each stated, we acknowledge the lives of those who have died from 9-11 related illnesses. The NYPD lost Sergeant Scott Johnston to 9-11 related melanoma on December 19th. Sergeant Johnston was an active sergeant and he served the department for over 20 years. He was only 50 years old. The New York State Police also lost a member of their department. Investigator Ryan Fortini died of 9-11 related cancer on New Year's Day. He was 42 years old. My prayers are with the families of Sergeant Johnston and Investigator Fortini and both the NYPD, the FDNY, and the New York State Police. Please stand for a moment of silence as we remember Chief Historian Lurch, Sergeant Scott Johnston, and Investigator Ryan Fortini. Thank you. The council is also sadly losing a vital member of our team this week. Julie Kim, the executive director of the council's women caucus, women's caucus is leaving us to become the Queensboro director for the US census, which is such an important position. So even though we are losing her, she is doing something incredibly vital and important for our great city. Julie became the caucus's first executive director in 2018, has done amazing, amazing work in her role, working with the co-chairs of the Women's Caucus, Carlina Rivera and Margaret Chin, to help lead our city on gender equity. We will miss you, Julie, and we wish you best in all your endeavors. And I want to give her a big round of applause. Where is she? Is Julie here? Thank you, Julie. And over the past few days, we have watched the island of Puerto Rico suffer a devastating earthquake and damaging aftershocks. Recovery will be difficult, and as with Hurricane Maria, we as a city need to make sure that Puerto Rico gets the federal resources needed to make repairs. I know that Councilmember Salamanca and other members yesterday sent a letter to the mayor asking that our city help the island at this difficult time, and the island remains in an official state of emergency, and our thoughts are with our brothers and sisters in New York's sixth borough. So happy new year. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and I look forward to working with you all in this year of 2020. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into a discussion of general orders. Seeing none, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees? None. General order calendar? Uh, resolution appointing various persons, commissioner of deeds. Coupled on general orders, and at this time, I am asking for a roll call vote on the general order calendar. And just so folks know, the only thing on the general order calendar today is the commissioner of deeds. So I ask for a roll call vote on that. Adams? Aye. Amprey Samuel? Aye. Ayala? Aye. Barron. Borelli. Aye. Brannan. Aye. Cabrera. Chin. 
Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Deutsch. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. I will I and I also want to wish all my colleagues a happy, healthy, and prosperous new year. Kozlowitz. I and I also want to wish everybody a happy, healthy new year. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Maisel. Menchaca. Feliz Año Nuevo. I vote aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkin. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Yes. Speaker Johnson. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 39 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committee as, as indicated on the agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Thank you. There aren't any resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. And we will begin with Council Member Yeager. Thank you, Madam President. I, uh, I rise first to thank Mr. Speaker for his words earlier. Uh, over the last several days, he has, uh, in very real ways, reached out to Jewish communal leadership in the city uh, to try to find pathways forward for the necessary security measures that have unfortunately become abundantly clear are needed in the Jewish communities in New York. I appreciate the thousands of New Yorkers and those who came from elsewhere to stand tall this Sunday against anti-Semitism. I also think how we got to here should be discussed. For far too long, too many who hold public office and those who portend themselves to be members of the media have tinkered at the fringes of anti-Semitism. You market an us versus them message against Orthodox Jews. You did this. When you deliberately paint a portrait of Orthodox Jews as backwards members of society who don't vote how you like, don't do what you want, don't educate our children how you wish, you did this. Those who took the time over Hanukkah to show up near a menorah, but play divide and conquer politics with the lives of Orthodox Jews, you did this. When an unprecedented verbal pogrom was unleashed in this chamber earlier this year for no purpose other than dividing New Yorkers and checking a box for your anti-Semitic friends, you did this. Those who spent Sunday posing for pictures with Jews, but spend the other 364 days of the year festering hate against my community, you did this. When you hold signs that claim you stand with Hasidic Jews, but then you go stand with anti-Semites, you did this. I won't be silent about who's responsible. The notion that a lack of tolerance is at issue, as if Orthodox Jews are so heinous that our presence in society is something to be tolerated is grotesque. We have the right to live in our city like anyone else. We have the right to go about our day without being assaulted. We're not doing this to anyone, you're doing this to us. You attack our yeshivas regularly, repeatedly with hatred. But whenever has anyone seen a group of yeshiva students run down a street and smack someone in the head? Why is that never discussed? How we raise our children to be honorable, intellectual, 
decent members of society, how we are kind to one another. Uh, Madam Majority Instead, Leader, hold, uh, you, Councilman Yeager, Madam Majority Leader, I want to uh, allow Councilman Yeager to have time to finish his remarks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's almost timed exactly. I appreciate it. You paint us all with a scarlet letter of derision. You did this to us. Those of you who did this know who you are, and you've done this. And it's your responsibility to stop it. And I'm asking you all not just to show up one day a year and take a couple of pictures, but do this for the other 364 days that you stand up and you hurt our community with your words, with your acts, with divide and conquer politics, with the things that are not necessary in this city just because you don't like how we think or you don't like how we dress or you don't like how we educate our children. Leave us alone and let us be part of this city without you festering hate on us. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much for your indulgence. I appreciate it. Councilmember Grudenchik. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo, and thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, for your words before. Uh, they are well meant and well received by me and millions of others who live in this city. 116 years ago, my grandfather, Max Grudenchik, Mordechai Aaron Ben Nissen, left Slonim in Tsarist Russia to find a new way of life here in New York City. His story is not unique. It's shared by millions of New Yorkers and countless millions of people like him and their descendants across our nation. <laughs> One week from today, we will celebrate and remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who would have been 91 uh, next week. Dr. King wrote and spoke, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. I speak today to thank my colleagues in this chamber, who are not Jewish especially, who have spoken out recently against the torrent of anti-Semitism that has stained our great city in recent weeks and months. Our history as human beings is littered with genocide. Armenia, the Holocaust, Rwanda, the rape of Nanjing, the brutality of Stalin, the killing fields of Cambodia, the middle passage of millions of Africans, and the brutality that we visited on Native Americans and other Aboriginal peoples around the world. It must stop. And I didn't want to let this session pass without speaking my mind. The Jewish community in New York City is not going away. It has been here for over 350 years. It has contributed greatly, not only to this city, but to the world at large. The polio vaccine, Dr. Jonas Salk, the internet half invented by Dr. Robert Kahn from Flushing, for God's sakes, we even gave you Scarlett Johansson. So I ask today that all people of goodwill come together, not just today, not just this week, and not just this month, but each and every day to build a better and more just society. I thank you for indulging me, Mr. Speaker and Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll just close with, as you said so eloquently, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we must recognize that we have to stand up with each other against all forms of hate, even if leadership favors one over the other. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And we have to unite in order to end hatred all throughout this country. And so I was so glad that our communities have continued to unite but it's important that we recognize that we cannot tolerate hate speech about any particular group of individuals anywhere in this country. And so I'll call on Council Member Steve Levin to close us out. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, <clears throat> first, I, I want to um, uh, vote aye on all general order items uh, as well. But I, I, I did want to take the opportunity here as well. Um, I represent Williamsburg um, in, in Brooklyn, uh, which is um, uh, a very diverse community. Um, there's um, Hasidic people, uh, families. There are African American families. There are Latino families. And um, during this recent um, uh, increase 
in anti-Semitic attacks. There was one, there was one report um, that was uh, in my district, and it was at a NYCHA development um, that is uh, uh, about a third Hasidic, a third Latino, a third African American. And uh, there was a report that uh, two children were punched in the elevator. Two Hasidic children were punched. Um, and um, when I heard that, my heart sank um, because I thought, um, you know, this is a development. Everybody's lived together for a couple of generations at this point. And there's very rarely incidents of violence in, this, in, the, in these developments, very rarely. Um, and it's almost a, you know, a matter of course. You live next door um, to people that don't look like you. Um, and so my heart sank. Um, a couple days later, I heard um, that that case actually was not, it did not happen. It was a, it was a false report. The kids were scared um, when a bunch of older kids entered the elevator and they, and they um, said that they were hit, but they actually weren't. And, you know, I was tremendously relieved because that comported, the reality, the, the truth, comported with, with the, the truth that I know of that development and those developments, which is that when people live together in close quarters and experience this city um, and experience life as neighbors, um, that is the antidote to hate. The antidote to hate is accepting one another for your differences and, um, and growing up next door to one another. That's, that's the antidote to hate. And so I feel very firmly that those of us in this room and the, the principals and the teachers in our schools and every parent and every civic leader out there in New York City has a responsibility to bring our children together. Bring our children together. Let them get to know one another as human beings. Um, and, you know, we are, we're not miracle workers and we can't, um, we can't uh, drive hate out of somebody's heart, particularly an adult who has, um, has come by um, that hatred and, and is, is uh, unwilling to let it go. But we can and we must make sure that our children don't hate. Because it's not just about today. It's about the world that we pass on to our kids and our grandkids. We have to deal with the hatred out there today. But the most important thing that we can do is teach our children to love one another. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Council Member Traeger, followed by Council Member Kosselowitz. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, before the Council Members go, I want to ask unanimous consent that Council Members Levin and Carnegie and anyone else who may have come, come in after uh, we had uh, closed out before, I want to ask unanimous consent that they are able to be marked present today and to vote on the general order calendar. Is there any opposition uh, to that from any members? So uh, with unanimous consent, I ask that Council Members Carnegie and Levin be able to vote on the general order calendar. Council Member Carnegie. I vote aye on all. Council Member Levin. Aye on all. Were Council there any other member members? Uh, Rodriguez. Hold on. Let's. I got you. Councilman Rodriguez. Yes. That's everyone. Great. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. And we'll now continue with Councilmember Traeger, followed again by Councilmember Kosselowitz. Thank you, Majority Leader. I also just want to just thank the speaker for his strong words and strong leadership and uh, my, to my colleagues. Uh, I want to note that today I'm introducing uh, introduction 1847, which will make sure that there is a comprehensive, holistic, individualized response to these violent hate crimes. I'm proud to have Council Members Rivera and Torres as prime co-sponsors. As we've heard, our city must stand united against all forms of hate. All New Yorkers should feel safe. We must all work together to make sure that no one is afraid to live, pray, 
to, to be in our city. My bill would make sure that there is an individualized mo uh, response uh, in a culturally responsive way to violent hate crimes and that the affected community is notified and mobilized within 24 to 48 hours after it has been determined that a hate crime has, has been occurred. The rise in hate crimes is unacceptable, it's chilling, and we must look at every resource possible to make sure that we protect New Yorkers. It's imperative that the rapid notification <coughs> and response process, which the city uses in its Cure Violence initiative, apply to hate crimes which could have a chilling effect on communities. Hate crimes require more than just tweets of condemnation, and currently there's not enough of a local connection to the response work. Our city must do everything possible to fight back against the rising uh, levels of hate. For months, I joined with the majority of my colleagues in the city council to advocate that hate crimes be included in Comstat, and thankfully, NYPD has heeded our call and announced this week that it will be adding hate crimes to Comstat. My bill is another way the city can ensure that there is transparency, accountability around hate crimes, and that there is a localized, individualized response to make sure that all communities are welcome and feel safe in our city. Thank you, Majority Leader, for your time. Thank you. Council Member Koslowitz. Thank you. <clears throat> in 1923, before my time, way before my time, I can't say that too often now, but my grandfather was removed from his house in Poland by the Cossacks and taken out because he was Jewish and killed. They're not sure if he was shot or he was buried alive, but he was dead. And as I grew up, I heard all these stories and always thinking that this can happen here. And as I live through the days now and read the newspapers, these things are happening here. It is something that we cannot ignore. No matter who you are, what you are, hate is a disease. And we must stop the hate that are shown to the people of our city, and right now, the Jewish people of our city. Let my people, leave my people alone. I am Jewish, I am proud. I am proud to have friends of different faiths, different colors, throughout my life. Just leave our people alone. I'll call on Speaker Cora Johnson to close this meeting. Uh, thank you for all these uh, remarks. I think it's important to have a discussion about this. Uh, the charter meeting of January 8th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>